Welcome to Dr. Ben's Micronutrients. In today's episode, let's talk about iron. Iron makes up 5% of the Earth's crust. It is second in abundance to aluminium among the metals. And iron is fourth in abundance behind oxygen, silicon and aluminium among the elements. However, despite its geologic abundance, iron is often a growth limiting factor in the environment. This apparent paradox is due to the fact that in contact with oxygen, iron forms oxides, which is highly insoluble and thus is not readily available for uptake by organisms. From ancient times, we have recognized the special role of iron in health and disease. Iron was used in medicine by the Egyptians, Indians, Greeks and Romans. However, it was not until 1932 that the importance of iron was finally settled by the convincing proof that inorganic iron was needed for hemoglobin synthesis. So for many years, nutritional interest in iron focused on its role in hemoglobin formation and oxygen transport. So we also realized that blood is red because of the interaction between iron and oxygen. Iron has several roles in the body. One of the most talked about and most understood is the role of iron in erythrocytes or red blood cells where it is important in the formation of the molecule called hemoglobin. Heme is iron, globin is a protein. Now iron also plays an important role in gene expression regulation as well as controlling ionic channels or ion channels for movement of ions like sodium and potassium and magnesium and so on. It also has a role in binding to different nuclear receptor proteins. As well, it plays an important role in the regulation of the circadian rhythm or circadian clock, which is a light and no light cycle or a day and night cycle. Iron is also essential for skin health. It facilitates oxygen transport in skin cells like it does with all organs. It also enhances skin aging when it's in imbalance. Iron deficiency can trigger off skin itch. Iron containing proteins are essential for collagen metabolism. As well, iron facilitates wound healing. Iron deficiency can cause a very important and very common medical condition called as iron deficiency anemia. Its signs and symptoms include extreme fatigue, weakness, pale skin, chest pain and shortness of breath, headaches, dizziness or lightheadedness, cold hands and feet, inflammation or soreness of the tongue, brittle nails and hair loss, and especially poor appetite in infants and children. Since iron is required for a number of diverse cellular functions, a constant balance between iron uptake, transport, storage and utilization is required to maintain iron homeostasis. Iron homeostasis is regulated at the level of intestinal absorption as there is no excretory pathway for iron. In other words, the important step about maintaining blood levels and tissue levels of iron is by regulating the absorption that is by inhibiting if there's too much or increasing if there's too little iron in the body. The challenge with this by not having an excretory pathway which means that we cannot excrete or remove our excess iron from the body is that this regulation has to be maintained very very precariously. 
Iron is available in many forms and in many kinds of foods. But what is important is the bioavailability, which means that iron has to be in a form that the body can easily absorb without many challenges. So here are some of the natural sources of iron. Organ meats like liver, red meat, fish like salmon, shellfish, broccoli, edamame, chickpeas, spinach, pumpkin seeds, dark chocolate, and dates to name a few. As I mentioned some time back, iron is a challenging micronutrient when it comes to absorption. And there are many factors that could influence iron absorption. Because iron deficiency anemia is so common, it's very important that we understand these factors. There are inhibitors like phytates, polyphenols, calcium and some kinds of protein that can reduce the absorption. There are competitors like lead, cobalt, strontium, manganese and zinc which can inhibit the absorption <coughs> of iron. As well, there are facilitators which can improve the absorption of iron these are ascorbate or vitamin C, citrates, some amino acids, meat, fish and poultry. An acidic environment is the best environment for absorbing iron. So gastric acid is very central to iron absorption. When gastric acid production is impaired, when we take drugs for example for gastritis or acidity, that can reduce the absorption of iron substantially and this is very common in, in a lot of our patients. So how much iron does one need? Now that depends on how old you are, what is your gender and also the physiological status like pregnancy or lactation. So here is one such table that gives you the iron requirements in milligrams per day. There are plenty of iron supplements that are available in the market and it is very important to choose the right one for you because iron can be a little bit nasty when it comes to absorption and irritation of the gastric mucosa. Constipation is pretty common with oral iron formulations. So here is a list of in the table of the different types of iron formulations that are available in the market. And what you'd notice is a column at the right called as elemental iron. That elemental iron is the total amount of iron in the supplement available for the absorption by your body. So you have to balance between the type of iron that you need and the elemental iron that is available in that supplement. A word of caution, we have to keep in mind that too much iron is not good. So despite the high prevalence of iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia, excess iron intake is also a source of adverse effects. Iron overload occurs when excess iron is stored in the tissue and is most often due to genetic causes such as hemochromatosis which has to be taken into account when we treat people or when we consume iron as a supplement. So iron is the most talked about micronutrient.